And when you hear a guy say, I heard it pop, that was alarming. But we're thinking, okay, he heard it being careful, being discreet, everything, whatever that is. But then in the press conference afterwards, he sounded like a guy that knew his body. But no one thought that this would be a weeks upon weeks injury. The foot injury that LeBron James suffered on Sunday in their comeback win versus Dallas. So I'm 6'2", a buck 95. I've snapped my third metatarsal in my left foot. So, and I heard it pop. So when you hear it pop as a guard who's lighter, you're like, man, that's, that's a big thing because as much as you're on the perimeter, you need that. For a guy like LeBron James who's 6'9", 250, 260, with the way he moves, hearing it pop, like that's just not, that's not a great sign for anybody. Because as an athlete, you automatically know, like, there's something, like, for the much thrust as I need and how I play Harry, I, 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 and you already heard LeBron talk. This has been an ongoing thing. Mm-hmm. This isn't new. We were talking about this before the All-Star break, about the load, him playing 41, 42 minutes per night. People saying at 38 years old, why are you playing the most minutes of your Lakers career in these last two years? And I get you're making a push, but this has always been the question, Harry. Are we asking too much of LeBron James at this stage of his career, even though he's putting up historic numbers and he can do it, but he should be at 30 minutes, 31 minutes per night instead of 36, 37. And Jay, I think that's the simple fact of, you know, Anthony Davis hasn't been healthy. Anthony Davis hasn't been everything that they hoped for when they made this trade for him years ago. Now, granted, they got a championship in the bubble, and AD was phenomenal then, but there's been a lot of question marks since that time, and injuries have plagued the uh, Los Angeles Lakers for numerous of years because of the injury bug um, has gotten the best of them. But I would say, Jay, I, I understand exactly what you're talking about. My last year here in Atlanta, 2014, um, I felt my foot pop, and I had a Liz Frank injury, but I didn't tear it. But my mm-hmm. metatarsals had to get worked out every single day in rehab. Right. And it was such a nagging injury that whenever I walked on sand or uneven surface, um, it just felt terrible. And I had to have special orthotics. Just recently, a year and a half ago, I took the special orthotics out of all my shoes. And this injury happened in 2014. Wow. Either way, by the Harry Douglas, Jay Williams, Freddie Coleman, or Keyshawn, Jay Will and Max on ESPN Radio. Going back to the sound, for those who didn't hear this, this is what LeBron James said when the injury happened in the third quarter in their comeback win versus Dallas on Sunday. LeBron James is holding his right lower foot area. It's not good news for the Lakers. He said it twice. I heard it pop. I heard it pop twice. When a guy says that, and you guys know this, Harry, you play in the NFL, Jay, where you play in the NBA, people don't realize how athletes know their bodies. They're not just out there just running around being gifted. When something is right, they say, hey, I'm 100. When something is wrong, hey, I know what's going on there. And even hearing him yesterday after saying that and then hearing the press conference where he just sounded worn he knew exactly that this was going to be a lot worse, and he didn't want to let it on, and the Lakers didn't want to let it on. So now the question becomes, more than ever before, what are they going to have to do in the future when it comes to LeBron James? Because as much of a Superman, Jay Will, that he has been, you can't expect him to do that in his 21st season in the NBA, even though, for my money, he's the greatest athlete that's ever played in the NBA. <sighs> okay, so... <laughs> This is like a Monday morning for me, even though it's Tuesday, because I'm actually coming back my first day on the job. And I hate to be a Debbie Downer, Harry. But, like, I didn't see the Lakers really contending anyway with a healthy LeBron James. I saw them making a push realistically for the sixth seed, considering they're about a game and a half out of the sixth seed spot, right? With 20-plus games barely to go in the season. When people always say, well, you know, Jay, it's the halfway mark. I'm like, actually... All-star game is not the halfway mark. It's the mm-hmm. 75% mark, okay? So you got 25 games left. So now you're telling me LeBron James is going to miss several weeks. That takes you all the way until almost the end of March before he's coming back. It leaves you about a week and a half of the regular season. Mm-hmm. So for me, I, I just – I see – and D- D'Lo's being out too with his injury. I see this being the Lakers season. And, and, and everybody's going to shift the focus yeah. to AD, which I get. AD's averaging 28 points per game, 10 rebounds, and 50% shooting when LeBron James is not there. But are we, are we realistically, Harry, going to think that Anthony Davis, with the injuries he's had throughout the course of his career, 
with how we've seen him not be durable, even though you add some different pieces, that we're going to expect A.D., Anthony Davis, and I love him as a talent, to carry the load to all of a sudden get the Lakers to a seventh or eighth seed. Like, I, I don't see that being realistic. And it, it, you could take that for a disrespect with Anthony Davis. I'm sorry. It's just how I think about Anthony Davis at this stage of his career, not having LeBron James and D'Lo on the court. Hey, see, like, here's the drama that I love about the NBA. How many times have we said over the past several years, if everyone were healthy, I, I, I could have tacked <laughs> that on to so many. De- I could have tacked that on to the Brooklyn mm-hmm. Nets. Keep yep. going. I could attack that on to the Lakers. Come on now. I could attack that on to my Chicago Bulls. Come on now. There's a reason why Jokic is about to get his third MVP. The dude is durable. Yes. Like, we always talk about, like, we get mad. Like, oh, oh these players aren't available. I'm like, well, that, that dude's available every single night. Mm-hmm. He's playing. Okay, that gets rewarded. And also, it brings up this question. How many times are we going to look at bigs? as being the driving force to winning championships. I don't know if that's where the game is. Okay. Like, I know I know Jokic, but Jokic isn't like a – he's not an Anthony Davis big. Right? He's, he's a different he's big. He's averaging a triple-double. He's a passer. Yeah. He's a facilitator. Guy has polo shots where he's rebounding the ball with one hand, not bringing it down. Basketball, basketball IQ is high as I don't it, know it's what. It's different, yeah. right? Like, Joel Embiid. Like, Joel Embiid, he's not a traditional big. I know he's more so on the perimeter. But you're still like, all right, James Harden is the driver on that team because he needs to be big in those big situations. Or Tyrese Maxey, even though you expect that from him. And I'm looking at AD the same way. I'm like, yo, AD is not the guy bringing the ball down the court, getting him in their offense. He might give you 28, but is it a momentum like 28 or 35. It's not, see it's not Giannis. That, no, it's not. It's not Giannis. It's not because those guys have guard like skills, mm-hmm. right? Where AD is more like, I need the ball in certain spots to be effective. One thing with the Lakers, and this cannot be disputed, when people want them to win, this is worse than we feared. Like I mentioned to kick off the show today, because how much of the conversation before we found about this injury was, and Key said yesterday, well, if they get into the playoffs, they got to play in game, they're going to hurt someone's feelings. And everybody always wants this franchise to matter, and I get it. It's just like the Cowboys in the NFL. It's just like Texas football and college football. It's just like Duke and North Carolina and college basketball. Everybody tries to have the narrative that the league is better when the Lakers are competing, when the Lakers are being a championship worthy. It hasn't really been like that other than the bubble for the Los Angeles Lakers, even before LeBron James got there. So I clearly understand why a lot of people are feeling some sort of way today and now all of a sudden people put pressure on Anthony Davis. But Jane Harry, you guys said it perfectly. This has been the Lakers. Think yep. about it. They've always been injury prone mm-hmm. ever since LeBron has gotten there. Whether it's been him, whether it's been Anthony Davis, or other players. For whatever reason, maybe they got bad voodoo, bad Gatorade, whatever that is. But this has been par for the course of the Los Angeles Lakers. And so for anybody to have any kind of outsized expectations it says a lot more about what they want the Lakers to be more than what it really is. I so think for, people – Jay, go ahead, Jay, I'm going to say this really quick. That's why I don't understand why people got upset about my comment when I said if you take away that bubble champions, championship for the Lakers, it has been a disaster since LeBron has gotten there. I don't know why people took that out of context. Well, I mean, your context is correct, uh, but at the same time, right, like relevancy matters. Absolutely. So, they're always it, going to be relevant. It's like we're talking about the Lakers as one relevant brand, and we're not even adding in the addition of LeBron James as the most relevant brand in the NBA, mm-hmm. maybe in maybe all sports today, right, along with mm-hmm. other quarterbacks. So those together, I mean, you're sitting there saying in LeBron James' first 15 seasons, he's missed 71 games. In his last five seasons with the Lakers, he's missed 98, right? So the whole thing for Rob Plinka has been – who are you surrounding him with, youthful talent-wise, to keep him knocking at the door right. when he's having these historic seasons? Sure. So I, this always comes back to not so much LeBron James to me, but to management and Rob Palenka and how they've lacked to put the tools around LeBron to help win the championship. If Anthony Davis doesn't get the Lakers to the playoffs okay. with, with without D'Lo right. and without LeBron, okay. are you going to look at Anthony Davis – Differently this no. offseason? No, I'm not going to look at him differently. Uh, so, like, I, yeah. I, I, I get, why I don't like I get how, pressure. Yeah, the, like the natural thing is like, well, uh, Anthony. But I think everybody out there who's listening to our show, if you follow sports, you're like, Anthony Davis, how many times have we said this? Top five talent. All the time. Top five talent. We're just wondering 
whether he could be that guy that gets you there. But everything has proven that he's a great additional piece, I think, to a championship team. Okay. I don't see him being the driving force. Harry, what about you? He better dig the hell deep then. <laughs> like, he, he, he's up. He, he's up. And I, and I get it, Jay. I get it. But he's up. The, the, the king is down. The king is down. When they brought you over to L.A., you were supposed to take all that pressure off LeBron. It was supposed to be you becoming the guy. Now it's the time for you to become the guy and be the guy. So you're up, in my eyes, along with everyone else on that team. Everyone else has to uh, uh, rise their play so Harry, tremendously. This, now. this is where we're going to dig deep into the trenches because you, you got family of hoopers. Yep. Like you and I, we talk football, we talk basketball all the time. Random text messages, not even when we're on the show. True. You own the L.A. Lakers. You mm -hmm. are a genie bus. All right? LeBron James is like, you know what? You know what, Harry? My time here is done. I can't. Bronny's coming to the league. Mm -hmm. He's going to get drafted by Charlotte. I'm going to go play and finish my career with Michael Jordan. Hypothetically, throwing it out there, right? Are you going to look at Anthony Davis, Harry Douglas, and be like, that's who I'm starting my franchise with? Are you going? Are you? Are, are you? Are you? Are you telling me on national TV right now Savage. on February 28th that Harry Douglas will say, you know what, Anthony Savage. Davis is where I'm starting my franchise with after LeBron James oh, leaves? Jay, that's Savage. a different conversation. I'm asking you. So like, no, you know my answer. My I, answer is gonna be no. Thank you. So like, why are you even expecting Anthony Davis to be that driving force? Because you know it's not there. You know because why he expects he, because it? Because he because he's the next result right now. Right, and he's like the, he, he's, he's the, the only player. one I feel, look at the, uh, on this team, and he's the only one that can do it if it's possible. You and know what I'm saying? I hear you, but I'm not making excuses for AD. I'm just letting everybody know what time it really is with Anthony Davis. What makes LeBron? What makes Giannis? What makes all the, even like Jokic to a degree because he handles the rock so much? All makes these guys, these guys initiate offense. That's what makes them so different. Mm -hmm. You'll see Giannis take a rebound, two dribbles down the court, bang, bang, plays happening. Nobody's stopping him at the rim. You're seeing Jokic get rebounds, loft passes, bringing the ball up, making crazy passes. LeBron James initiate. AD doesn't initiate anything. He needs somebody to initiate the offense for him. So as I do think he can give you big numbers, okay. 28, 30 points a night, it just it feels like the impact that he has on the game is less than what you would see from a Giannis, you know, LeBron right. James or Jokic. I'm gonna well, count. Y'all uh, know what I want to see though. What do you want to see? I'm, Harry? I'm, I'm waiting for this game. It's tonight, right, against the Memphis Grizzlies. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, they play, play. tonight. Mm -hmm. Because we're talking about a top six defensive team in the NBA, right? I want to see the mindset of Anthony Davis coming out into this game tonight. That, that's what I really want to see. That's going to tell me everything I need to know about the Lakers moving forward. The trampoline off of that. We saw that mindset in the third and fourth quarter on Sunday because he was treating the Dallas Mavericks, the use Shaquille O'Neal's term, like barbecue chicken. Mm -hmm. Anybody they threw at him, he was giving them the three-piece combo with the fixings, and there wasn't anything they could do about it. And that was something that we mentioned yesterday. It wasn't just that he had the points of 30 and 17. It was the attitude of both ends of the floor. It was as if he said, oh, LeBron's injured. I got to step up and be that guy. And he did. They couldn't get the ball to the rim. They couldn't guard him. And he wasn't having it. If you see that kind of Anthony Davis, and you don't have to see it all the time, but you got to see it more than what we're thinking right now. If we see that kind of Anthony Davis, then maybe just maybe they can survive a little bit and find their way into the playoffs. If we don't see that kind of Anthony Davis that we saw in that third and fourth quarter where he said, I'm the biggest, baddest boy in this jungle. There's not a damn thing you guys can do about it. If we see that kind of Anthony Davis, then we'll see exactly what kind of impact potentially that he can have on the Lakers because now he's going to be the dude. You, you are talking about the game where LeBron had 26 and 8 in 37 minutes. That, that game Sunday, against yeah. Dallas? Mm -hmm. That, that game? Oh, that once one. again, mm -hmm. who initiates the offense? Like, I, I get I, it. I I'm, hear not, you. I'm not saying that AD can't put up prolific numbers. Please, I, I think AD has all the talent in the world. There's just certain players, like Steph Curry's this player, Harry. There are certain players that when they get going, the rest of the team feeds off that. And it weakens the other team a little exactly. bit. There's like a momentum where everybody feels like this push, like, oh, damn, here, here it comes. There's a fear factor. There's no fear factor with Anthony Davis for me as a former player. Like, I, I know what the production is, but I don't feel like that's going to give me a momentum of points that's going to lead the Lakers on a 30-0 run. And, Jay, you do have a point. And I'm going to say this because when you look at the Lakers, right, and you look at their next eight games, well, four of those games are against top nine defensive teams. And when you do have a LeBron James on the basketball court, it takes a lot of attention away from you. 
and you may get one-on-ones per se more so than a lot of other teams because who LeBron James is and the attention he's going to, you know, to, to demand. So that's why now, for me, Dennis Schroeder and whenever D'Lo come back, the point guards per se, it's going to be on those guys to be able to get Anthony Davis that basketball in his spots where he needed because he's going to have to take way more shots than he did, uh, I, I think, this entire season um, averaging. In, in moving forward without LeBron James. Just think about what we're doing right now, guys. So mm -hmm. most of the time when superstars go down, right, when Kyrie Irving goes down, all right, Kevin Durant, it's a one-man show. Like KD almost yeah. single-handedly beat Milwaukee yeah. a couple of years ago. If his shoe size was different. Right? Well, <laughs> like what we ask of certain superstars, okay. But like what we're saying with AD, you, you don't feel that same kind of steam, that same kind of momentum, like, all of a sudden, we expect Anthony Davis to carry the load. Some people will throw it out, but mm -hmm. then your natural reaction is, ah. right. And that, ah. right. But that's why I said, what if is we it, see, Jay? Ah. Ah. <laughs> but that's why he wasn't ah. in the third and fourth quarter. It wasn't just the points and rebounds, it was the impact. I, I he hear, controlled both things. That's what I'm saying. If but, we see that one, I, I'm with you guys. I want to see if he's actually going to be able to do that. Because he's used to being the Robin to the Batman since he got to Los Angeles. But now he's the leader of the Justice League when it comes to Anthony Davis. He's Superman and leading Wonder Woman, Batman into the fire against everybody else. Can he do that? And that question is very valid because Wait. we haven't seen it from Anthony who, Davis because he hasn't needed to do it. Who on his roster is from the Justice League, though? Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.